Hey, I'm Cameron McKenzie. I'm the editor-in-chief at theserverside.com, and I want to quickly show you my three favorite ways to read input from a user in a Java program. And I'm even going to throw in one more, which is my least favorite. Now, starting off, I want to show you the Java console. You just, to take input from the user, all you have to do is say var input equals and say system.console dot read line read a line of input and that gets the input for you now probably want to prompt the user system dot out dot print line type something <laughs> that's always a good thing to do and then maybe we'll print back out to them with a system dot out dot print line what they typed in so you typed in and then plus input I don't know, we can maybe even say, you know, what is your name or something like that to make it look a little bit nicer. Now, there is a problem with the system console class, and that is that it doesn't run on headless Java, Java W. So if you actually try and run this inside of Eclipse, inside of Spring Source Tool Suite, you get this nasty error. So that is the problem with it. I mean, there is a way to run it. You can just say, hey, show this in my local terminal and then run it at the command line, which is Java C. I don't have to do Java C anymore since Java 17. The name of it, Java console user input dot Java. Make sure you've spelled it properly. And if you do, it says, hey, what's your name? My name's Cameron. You typed in Cameron. And there you go. That's how easy it is to take user input with the system console class in Java. Now, where do we go after that? Well, the big problem with the system console is that it doesn't work in Eclipse. But, you know, we've got options. One option is to use the scanner. Now, I do believe that you have to import the scanner, right? You have to do import java.util and I hate doing that with people that are new to Java, but it does make that scanner available to you. And then all you have to do at this point is say scanner, scanner equals new scanner and pass system in into the scanner. That just allows it to take a feed from the console. And then I guess we can do, oh, we can always do that old, hey, what is your name as we did over here? And then grab the input from the user. So say var input equals, and in this case, it would just be scanner.next line. Now I did a tutorial in there between next and next line, but next line will get you everything that they typed in. So that gives us the input. I don't know, previously we just printed that out and hey, I'm not, uh, I'm all about copy and pasting previous work. So. There you go, we get the input and we print it out. Now watch this beautiful thing here. Run as a Java application. It runs, it says, what is your name? I type in Cameron. It says you typed in Cameron. I didn't have to do that at the command line. I did not have to compile anything. All I had to do was just run it. And that's one of the benefits of the scanner. Now my third option here is to use the J option pane. I love the J option pane. You got to do a little import of javax.swing if you want this to work, but it is so easy to get user input using the J option pane class. I might copy the old what is your name here. And actually, I don't even need to do that. All I have to do is say var input equals, say J option pane dot show input dialog and say, hey, what's your name? So you have to do a system dot out dot print line. That's going to get the name. And then if I want to print out the results, all I have to do is use that J option pane dot show message box, show message dialog. I think the first argument is null, but I could say you typed in plus input. Okay, that compiles, gives me a false sense of security right there, but I think that's gonna work. Let's see what happens if I do the good old run as a Java application. 
Boom, it says, what is your name? Mapping to line seven there. I'm gonna type in Cameron and watch this. Boom, it says, you typed in Cameron. So there you go. That's how you use the J option pane to take input from the user. Now the next option is the system in, which I don't particularly like because I think it's messy, but it works. So let's take a look at this one as well. So to make this one work, we need to mosey on over to the import sections and import java.io. I owe everybody something, don't I? And then over here in the code, well, to use the system in and the buffer, this is the way we used to do it before we had the scanner and the console class. You have to do this crazy stuff. You got to go input stream reader reader equals new input stream reader and pass in system in. Oh boy, try explaining that whole line of code to someone who's new to Java. And then after you got the input reader, you'd need the buffered reader. We'll call that BR and say new buffered reader and pass in the reader. Okay, now we've got that. And I guess we can do the old prompting like we did before. We can say, hey, what is your name? I'll just paste that in just because I'm lazy. And then we'd want to do var input equals. And what are we going to get here? Well, we'll go to that buffered reader and say read line. So we'll read a line of input. That gives us input from the buffered reader. And then finally, we can print out the result. And that's just going to be the same as the line of code before over here. Print that out. Let's see what kind of an error I've got here. Oh no, unhandled exception. This is another reason why I hate it. You gotta do the throws exception up here. Or you could optionally handle the exception if you really wanted to. But there you go. I think that's a mess. Uh, I think that's a scary thing to throw at Java noobs. And I also think that's part of the reason why Java gets slagged as being verbose because. 20 years ago, that's how you took input from the user. Now, will this run? Run as a Java application, get user input using this buffered reader and system in. What's your name? My name's Cameron. You typed in Cameron. Okay, there you go. Those are the four different ways that you can grab input from the user, read user input in a Java application using the system in buffered reader. I don't like that. Using J option pane. That's my absolute favorite. I love the windowing, the GUI element to it. You can always use the scanner. That's fairly popular. Lots of great methods there. And I love the console. But as we saw the console, well, doesn't work in headless Java, it doesn't work with Java W. So can't use it inside of Eclipse or Spring Source Tool Suite. But there you go. Those are the different ways you can grab input from a user in a Java application. Now, if you enjoyed that tutorial, why don't you head over to the serverside.com. I'm the editor in chief over there. We got lots of great tutorials on Java, Jakarta EE, Java EE, Git, GitHub, DevOps, microservices, you name it. If you're interested in my personal antics, you can always follow me on Twitter and please subscribe on YouTube.